Tastes like snobs and grenadine Like sex on the beach We go back, we got history It's Daphne, your favorite person in the whole wide world. We are sitting down with Brian Herskowitz. How you doing? So far, so good. Still early, but so far, so good. Oh, yeah, LA time. You're you're three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can read your future. <laughs> uh, that's All right. right. So we are going to talk today. We are going to welcome him back first off because last time he was on, he was on the director's corner, but this time we are promoting his new book, which looks pretty damn good. Thank you. Tell us about the book, Brian. Okay. I just happen to have a copy with me. Um, it's called Conceptus. There we go. We'll get off the shine there. Um, <laughs> and it is a murder mystery about a young woman who, when she's very young, is assaulted left in a coma, and then 24 years later, she's a homicide detective in Columbus, Ohio, on the trail of a ser serial killer whose MO is almost identical to the attack that almost took her life 24 years earlier. And uh, it's kind of a nifty little uh, suspense thriller. So is this based on a true story? It's based on a, a kind of an amalgamation of things that were happening in, in the news at the time that I wrote the story. So although it's not a true story, it's taken from the headlines. So it's one of those ripped from the headlines type story. But it, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, a, it's an interesting piece. I'm working on a sequel right now to it. Um, so I hope to keep the character around for a while. And got a second novel in the works. So what made you decide that you wanted to write this book? Well, actually, I was approached for someone uh, by someone from Warner Brothers because uh, I primarily am a screenwriter. That's been my career. Um, I was approached by someone who was a producer there who had an idea, and I took it and run, ran with it. The, 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 so it, initially, it started off as a screenplay. And what happened was the deal that I made with the producer was uh, if you don't take this project, it's my copyright. I've written it. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to run with it. And that was the deal we made. So I was inspired. Um, he, he had the germ of an idea and that was the inspiration. From there, I kind of went wild with it and uh, integrated a whole bunch of different stories and, and plots and characters. So you were just like, we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, was, uh, he was not a producer with Warner Brothers, he was a producer and he worked at Warner Brothers. So under those conditions, he could only take it to Warner Brothers. And Warner Brothers wasn't interested, passed on it. So it reverted back to me. And now I'm, I took it. And when COVID hit, I was sitting around twiddling my thumbs going, okay, nobody's making any movies right now. What am I going to do with my life? And I thought about, you know, do I have another screenplay I want to write? Or And then it dawned on me. Um, I had not written a novel before. I've always... My, uh, I come from a, a long line of writers uh, on prior, prior to me and after me. Uh, my daughter's a writer, my father's a writer. And I really was thinking, you know, I might want to try my hand at a novel. And it dawned on me that I, a screenplay in a, in a lot of ways could be a great outline because you have the story plotted out. So that's basically what I did is I took that story and then I was able to dive do, deeper into the characters, deeper into the structure, you know, started to look a little bit more, well, you know, this character here that's just really no has a line. What's their life about? What do they, what do they want in, in the world? What are they doing here? So I started to investigate that. And I had a great time writing it, really enjoyed the process. So I'm, I think I'm going to do it again. I've actually got two different novels that I'm working on, the sequel to this one. And then I have another screenplay that I'm adapting into a novel. So I'm working, normally you go, you know, uh, you, you do a, you do a, a novel and that becomes a movie. Uh, once in a while, you do a movie and that becomes a novel. So. Yeah, things are backwards anymore. And with COVID, I agree. You know, nobody knew what was going to happen with COVID. 
Right. Nobody, I mean, nobody knew if, if anybody was going to get to work again. I mean, we had projects that we were working on that, you know, were funded. And then when, well, they were in the paperwork, but mm -hmm. then all of a sudden COVID hits and everybody got scared and then sure. everybody walks away because they don't, you never know. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And I'm glad we all got to go back to work as fast as we did, even yeah. though it was two years, but still, you know, and I'm sorry, Warner Brothers, but it's now your loss because I think we should move forward with this. <laughs> yeah, I hope to. I hope to. I, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, a fun series of novels. And I think it'll be an exceptional screenplay. I, I think that it's a it's a really powerful story for a very strong female lead. And I, I, I can't wait to get into the casting process. So that's that's my that's my my wish and my hope for this. But it's been so it's been a great experience. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just said it's been a. I just said it's been a great experience so far. You do you have any training in like forensics or? No, not not directly. But I'm I'm a huge uh, proponent of research, and my feeling is, you know, I, I think every writer, you know, somebody said, you know, write what you know, mm -hmm. and of course that's that's a great piece of advice. But what you don't know, go find out. <laughs> you know, learn about it study yeah. so i i you know study i i did research i talked to police officers i talked to attorneys i you know i read every book i could read on the subject so i i try my best to take something and you know the one thing about film television and novels you know they are escapism they're they are entertainment and because of that they can't be real life you know that's for documentaries that's for you know, uh, nonfiction books. But when you're talking about an entertainment and, and trying to keep an audience engaged or a reader engaged, you can't necessarily just do real life. But my feeling is the more you understand what the truth of the situation is, what the motivation of characters are, why people are acting the way they are, why they behave the way they do, and what the facts are in terms of how are things handled, the better the audience then kind of relaxes into the story because they don't have to think about, well, wait a minute, is that how that goes? Is that when you when you go to arrest, they don't, you know, when they Mirandize somebody, how do they do that? Do they have to have a, you know, all that stuff. When you just know it and you can put that into it, then the audience kind of goes, okay, this is, we're in good hands. We know that we're someplace where the, the writer knows what they're talking about. So we can just enjoy the story. So I, I'm a big believer in that, whether it's, uh, you know, a story, a courtroom drama, a crime drama, or Avatar. And, you know, when you start getting into fantasy and you start getting into sci-fi, the rules are are limitless, but we as an audience and we as a reader, we want to feel that authenticity, even though there isn't anything to be authentic about. There are no nine foot tall blue people in my yard. I don't know about <laughs> your yard, but, you know, we don't have, we don't have a lot of that Avatar stuff here. So, you know, that's all invented, but it has to be grounded in a reality, which is about world building, which is about, you know, and that goes back to how much does the author research and understand what it is they're trying to portray on the screen in the book, et cetera. Yeah. I went to school for criminal justice. Oh, did you? I don't know if I ever told you that. Yeah. I took two years of medical school um, for medical administrative assisting or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And I went through that and then I figured out I can't watch people throw up. <laughs> I, I don't even like hearing it. So then um, I took those credits that I had got that were basically, and I switched into um, the bachelor's program for crime scene investigation and forensic, uh, pro well, psychology, mm -hmm. profiling, same thing. You know what I mean? Right. And I loved it. Like I, I love school anyway. I'm a weirdo. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not even going to lie. I like to learn. And I am really funny about that with my kids. Like yeah. school, I told them, I was like, I will hold your hand and go into the classroom and sit with you before you ever quit school. You know, but when I was going, it was, we were writing papers, I mean, 22 to 28 page papers every, because I was doing it online. Um, mm -hmm. And it was every, I'd say two days. And wow. yeah, and I did a lot on um, what I really wanted to do. I didn't want to become like a, a street cop. I mm -hmm. wanted to profile serial killers and 
basically pedophiles, you know what I mean? Right. And yeah. go after those people because I have like serious issues with those people like that, you know, and the stuff you learn is crazy i mean crazy yeah. i loved it i loved the whole program the whole forensic like i even went and took the police exam and passed it and wow. i was gonna go back for the um the agility and all that but my daughter got sick and they couldn't mm -hmm. figure out for a long time what was wrong with her and i was like there's no way in hell i could be gone because you you do have to train in the same police academies you know so right it would have been 36 weeks. It would have been 18 out on the street and 18 and, you know, the boot camp. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. like, there's no way in hell I could be gone that long. So I kind right. of put that aside. And it, it sucks when you pay all that money to get a school and you don't ever get to use it. But now it's kind of cool though, because I might've not, to, you know, got to use it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. It's coming in handy in this business. I'll bet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's my actually, my grandmother uh, was a a scientist in the crime lab mm -hmm. in Houston, Texas, uh, back when women generally were not scientists in crime labs. But she that she was one of the first women uh, crime lab people in the state of Texas many 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 years ago. Wow. But uh, yeah, so that that's my closest connection to the to the police uh, side of things. But. I, you know, it's always been something that fascinates me and particularly procedure and how, how do they do it? You know, what is the process? You know, what do they do when they're confronted with a situation that seems like there is no information? What do they do? How do they, you know, how do they move through time and space? And that's, you know, it, this is not necessarily procedural, but, you know, it has some elements of that. Yeah. So would you ever, I mean, what, what's the coolest book that you did read so far, as far mm. as I mean, I know we're we're promoting Conceptus, but to learn a little bit more. Oh, what well, uh, in terms of what books? Like there, there are, yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, now with the internet, it's almost impossible not to be able to find information on basically anything you want to learn about. Yeah. Um, it's at your fingertips. Prior to that. There, there are books. There's actually a whole series of books on uh, on crimes and, and criminology for specifically for writers. Um, I have a stack of them. I can't remember what the names uh, of the writers are at the moment, but I could I could run around the corner here and get them for you. Oh, but no, there are huh? You're fine. <laughs> I was just wondering if you knew one right off the top of your head, but not the top of my head. But there, I have a, I have a literally a whole library of you know like books on who who how done it is one that I have, um, you know, crimes. I have one on, on, you know, murder, one on theft, one on, you know, poisons, one on, you know, so basically it breaks it down and uh, police procedurals, you know, information on that. And of course, you know, one of the things that you have to understand is that it's different depending on where you are, uh, who, who, you know, what jurisdiction you're in. Yeah. Um, they have, may have different call letters, different way of speaking. So you just have to be aware of that. But uh, and my story is is set in Columbus, Ohio. I'm not from Columbus, Ohio. I've never, you know, I've been to Ohio. I I can't remember if I've ever been to Columbus, but you yeah. know, it's not it's not a, an area that I'm particularly familiar with. So I I did a lot of research about Columbus. Um, that was something that the internet was extremely helpful on. You know, I could look at a map and I could I could Google and I could say things like, well, okay, what's the best neighborhood? You know, if somebody I want somebody who's really wealthy. Where would they live? Uh, I want somebody who's not, you know, who's living in a in a rundown area. What would that be? You know, what's the most, what's what areas are the highest crime rate? What, what areas have the lowest crime rate? You know, those are questions that I would want to ask. Mm -hmm. And those are questions that I could find on the internet. Now, how accurate it is depends on how accurate the people that are putting up that information. So you, you have to take it with a grain of salt and you have to kind of verify the information that you have but you know also i don't suspect people are going to go oh no no wait a minute if he takes a left on fifth street he's not going to end up at this place he's going to you know so i don't think i don't think people get that granular but they might and hopefully i'll be able to say well i i looked on a map and it sure seemed that way uh, but we'll see. <laughs> there's a book that i think that you um i mean not as far as this but later on check it out it's uh, called head and um hidden evidence i believe i i have it i'll text it to you yeah that would be a good background as far as for yeah, I may have it actually. Like I said, I have a I have a pretty large 
it's got know, a library lot of people, uh, like Jack yeah. Ripper. Um, it actually has mm -hmm. photographs. Um, it, it's just crazy, but yeah. it it is helpful to do your research before you're writing the books. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Good idea. I, I think, I think it's a good idea. So, moving forward. Yeah. Or a screenplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to go down that route, right? I hope so. I mean, I, I would love to see this done as a film. I think it would be an, uh, I think it'd be a very good film. I think it's a terrific part for uh, a star, female star. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully. A film or like maybe a TV series? You know, I, I had always thought that it would be a, a film, uh, but you know, one of the things that's happened, not just since COVID, but prior to COVID and now moving forward, is the lines between what is a feature and what is television and, and you know, what makes sense to do as a, as a movie versus a, a television series is blurry. And, you know, now you see limit, what they call, you know, limited series where it'll be three episodes where, you know, it's a, a five or four hour movie, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's what's interesting about that is I think oftentimes in the past when I when I started off as a writer in television, when you would write you know a series, you were basically reinventing the wheel each week. You kind of had to remind everybody, hey, last week, remember what we were doing? And now because everybody you know they they stream their their binge watching, they don't have that same purview in terms of well, I have to make sure that they remember that this character was this person and. It just flows from one to the next. And a few years ago, I was at a workshop, um, and I can't remember who who was speaking to. They were talking about one of the differences in the industry now. And one of the things they talked about is with the streaming services, with binge watching, that when you take like a ten episode series, you're really looking at a very long movie, and it's cut up in in a way where it's you know, act one is the first three episodes, act two is the six middle episodes, and, you know, act three is the last four episodes. And when you start to look at it like that and say, okay, I've got a story that has this big arc, it makes a lot of sense. So it's very possible, um, particularly the the sequel to the first novel is picks up exactly where you left off. So it's the same characters, it's basically following up on the same story. Um, so the you could absolutely do this as a limited series. I'm, I would be, I wouldn't be too uh, too sad if they decided that that was the way they wanted to go. Yeah. But it really depends on you know, you, you only have so much control in this world when you're where when you're a writer or an artist or, or an actor or producer or anything that you do, and you know you you kind of have to go with the tide. And right now the tide is pushing a little more towards television, but I don't know. I'm going to tell you as a viewer, just as yeah. a viewer, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty. I do binge watch sometimes, um, but normally I've watched the episodes, but there have been three little mini series that have kind of irritate. Well, no, the one supposedly shooting again. So that's going to actually be, it, it's going to go on. That's Tulsa King. I love that one. But when they did Harley and the Davisons, uh -huh. it was only three. I was uh -huh. so mad. Like, damn it, we could have just kept going. <laughs> yeah. Or the offer, like, mm -hmm. I just binge watched that probably for the third time the other day. And I'm telling you what, oh my, they could have continued that one too, you know, because yeah. you had Godfather 2, the Godfather 3, you know, the rest. I was so mad when they cut them. See, that's why I like for things to go. I know they can't go on forever, but damn, you could have gave yeah. a little bit more than three or four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's something to be said for the idea of, you know, leave your audience wanting more. The idea that, you yeah. know, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather be going, gosh, I wish there was more than, oh my God, I wish this was over. <laughs> How long have been, I've been, I've wasted, you know, 10 hours of my life watching this series. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get to that place where you're watching something and go, okay, enough, we, we, we've got it, move on, let's go, enough, you know. So yeah, there, there's, there's something good about having that idea because <laughs> then they can always come back and say, you know, you asked for it, we brought it, here it is. And I'm sure that's probably part of their thought process as well. <laughs> All right. So let us know, where can we buy Conceptus? Even though I know ah, it's on the site, but we'll tell them anyway. Uh, you can buy it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's on the publisher site, which is booklocker.com. Uh, you can probably most online bookstores, Not it's not physically in the bookstores at the moment. 
but online just about anywhere that books are sold and uh yeah you can get it there or you can you can call me i'll get it to you <laughs> we I don't i got a couple, a couple of copies I can you see. don't ever want to say that on here because people people like, will do it, they, it? I, okay. I get lonely i like to hear from people i'm okay <laughs> but there's a difference when they're calling and calling and calling not leaving yeah that's true all right now i take it back don't call me <laughs> shoot an email to his yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can also find the book uh, if you go to my website. You can also find out a little bit more about me in general. And that's my name, Brian And it's Herskowitz, H E R S K O W I T Z. For those of you who uh, are scared of the longer names, you can You're try that. You're picking on me, aren't you, Brian? <laughs> and not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not even in the least. <laughs> you hear that, you guys? You guys really need to buy this book. It is pretty good book man i'm telling you so and when it gets turned into a tv show yet again warner brothers you drop a movie on that one so we're gonna carry that one out and make a show looking forward to it <laughs> all right we are going to wrap this up we're definitely gonna thank you for coming on and everybody thank you daphne buy your book have me back again i love it yeah definitely <laughs> you're more than welcome to come on anytime you feel like coming on Thank All you. you gotta do is shoot me a text. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. I definitely will. All right, you guys. I'm saying see you later. We'll see you next time. Bye. Tastes like the snobs and grenadine Like sex on the beach We go back, we got history Sex on the beach Call me a double shot of Tito's In my glass Sex on the beach Let's put our toes in the sand I see up in a kiss and Sex on the beach